In this video, I'm going to take you through some advanced color grading concepts to level up your DaVinci Resolve workflow. I'll talk about camera color spaces, color management settings in DaVinci, HDR, masking and warping, and how to apply a custom grade for consistency. Use the timestamps to jump to your point of interest. Hi, this is Alex from Massive, the fastest file transfer solutions for filmmakers and video professionals like me and you. Sign up for a free trial of Massive using the link in the description below for better, faster file transfer of all your heavy video files like camera raws, log footage, and transcoded assets. So what is color space? Color space is a standardized way of representing and encoding colors. Different camera manufacturers have their own color spaces optimized for their specific sensors. These color spaces are essential to understand, especially when working with raw footage. The most common color space is Rec. 709, and is mostly used for broadcast and web. But this one has been replaced by Rec. 2020 and Rec. 2100, which are mostly used in broadcast as it offers better HDR support. So brighter highlights, more vivid colors, and deeper and detailed blacks for a consistent image across devices. The DCI P3 color space is typically used for commercial cinema, but you should confirm the specific settings for the theater you will be screening. Recording in Rec. 709, the standard color space, simplifies your workflow because the colors are already set. But this also limits your color grading possibilities later in post, as there won't be much information to play around with, particularly in darker areas of the image. If you have footage recorded in RAW, that's great, you'll have extensive control over your footage. RAW footage typically offers 12 or 14 bits, providing a broader range of colors compared to Rec. 709's 8 bits. Be prepared though with a pro computer and a fast spacious hard drive to deal with those files, which can be very heavy. If you have footage recorded with a log profile, that's also great. You will also have a lot of control over your footage, not as much as in RAW, but a lot. It's usually recorded at 10 bits and it uses an optimized gamma curve to record an image with as much information as possible in highlights and shadows. So the image will look desaturated and with low contrast. You will need to select a color space to convert the colors and bring them out in post. Again, each camera manufacturer offers its own log profile adapted to its sensor, and each log must be converted in a certain way. You can use the technical LUTs for color space conversions, or you can use the effect Color Space Transform, which lets you put the color space and gamma used in the recorded footage, and then select the desired color and gamma output. Go to the bottom right corner in the gear icon to open settings, then click Color Management. Color management is a process that ensures consistent color reproduction from the point of capture to the final display. It sets the starting point of all of your clips to one specific color space. This works great to maintain consistency when you're working with different files from different cameras, or if you have different delivery outputs, as web, broadcast, and cinema have different color standards. To activate color management, select in Color Science, DaVinci Color YRGB Color Manage. You could also use ACES, but this will be a different workflow. This one is used in bigger productions when VFX is involved, for example. So better to check with whom you are delivering to, to select your correct color management framework. In this new drop-down menu, it is set in Rec. 709 for the web. We're going to select here DaVinci White Gamut. This one will allow you to do your color correction and use this same project even if you have to change your delivery output. See the description of this preset, it covers a wide range. Next, let's go to Output Space Color. Here, select the appropriate color space that matches your monitor standard for accurate color representation. Keep in mind that if you have to deliver to broadcast or cinema, you have to check or ask what the settings are going to be. So select your output color space depending on that. If you're using all footage from the same camera, in color processing mode, you can select Custom. As we just used the white gamut preset, all of these settings are set for that, so you can just select your camera input color space. You can also change the input color space of specific clips by right-clicking on the clip thumbnail, then input color space. Or if you want a specific clip to not be color managed, you can select bypass color management. Keep in mind though that if you need to change to a different delivery output, that clip will look different. Let's go to the HDR tab, 
This feature is similar to the primary color wheels, but offers way more control over individual tunnel ranges. There are six wheels, six tunnel ranges that we can modify. These represent different levels of image highlights and shadows. You can click on this little half color circle on the top left of each wheel to see what is affecting directly in the image. Click on the highlight mode on the main window to keep the affected areas on. This will show you the last wheel you worked on. Move this circular slider next to each wheel zone to modify the size of the areas it's affecting. Then you can color correct the colors and lighting in detail. You can use Color Warper by clicking on the icon next to the curves. This tool also allows you to correct color and saturation, but in a more interesting way. This grid represents the image. In the viewer, you can select an area and drag the cursor to modify the hue and saturation. The red cross in the grid tells you which color you are hovering around in the image. And the yellow box will appear in those little points to tell you which is the closest color control point you'll affect if you click and drag there. You can also add more points for better control and adjustments in the bottom left drop-down menu. And you can also lock control points, so it doesn't affect any specific color or section of the image. Check on the viewer which color is the one you want to lock, check on the grid the closest control point, select it, then on the right menu, convert selected point to a pin. Now it has a black stroke and it's locked. In the central toolbar, right here in the middle, select the icon that has a little person in there. With this tool, you can select either people or features. The magic mask will automatically make a mask out of a person, a face, or an object. Let's select a person. Click and drag the cursor to make a small line or stroke in the face. Make it small so the tracking can follow those pixels throughout the clip without problem. On the top right, toggle mask overlay to see the mask that was created. You can see it selected the person completely. Click the play button to start the tracking. Cool, it does an amazing job recognizing the person and tracking its movement. On the right side of the magic mask window, we have some controls we can use to clean up the mask. Adjust the quality parameters to refine the mask and make the selection better. You can also use the blur radius tool to feather the mask a bit better. From there, you can also modify the color or lighting of just the subject on screen without affecting anything else in the clip. If you don't want the mask to select the person but instead want it to select the environment, just click on this little icon with the rectangle and a circle inside in the magic mask window. Remember, you can also do this with specific features so you can select more specific areas of your clip to fix. The process is the same, and you can then add more parts of the image, like only a face with neck and arms to adjust the skin tones, for example. To copy a color grade to other clips on the timeline, create a still of the grade you want to use. Let's give it a name to keep track of what's what. Then go to the clip you want to apply the grade, right-click on the still and select Apply Grade. If you have done some previous work on the clip to make the starting point similar and you just want to add the look and style you developed afterward, select a pen note graph instead of apply color grade. It will copy the note structure from that clip you took the screenshot from. There you can erase the notes you don't need and have the exact look. Those were some concepts, tools, tips and color grading best practices so you can master advanced color grading in DaVinci Resolve. Remember, you can sign up for free with Massive to send your footage and color-corrected deliveries to anyone from your team or your clients. In fact, Massive recently announced a 35 times speed upgrade for colorists working with thousands of image sequence files. It's the only file transfer tool built for media professionals, so definitely check it out. Link is still in the description box below for you. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up to support the channel. And if you want more tips on ways to improve your professional media workflow, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Let's dive in, Chi. <laughs>